Hello, this is Kim, and today I want to show a way of building up a poster using a reference image in GIMP. And if you watch to the end, I'll show you a bonus way of adding a worn look to the image. So to start with, the hardest part of actually doing this tutorial is finding the, um, the image to work with. Uh, you'll often find the clients will ask for a particular style, or they'll have an idea in mind of actually getting you some reference image to start off with. Uh, for this project, I did want, um, uh, I've gone for a retro look for the image, so I've gone and found some artwork that, that suits the color palette that I want. For me, the hardest part is actually getting colors that match and colors that work together. So uh, for this project, I really wanted a, a retro feel. So I found, found some artwork that has a color palette I'm happy with. From there, I just bring it into GIMP. Um, so the colors here, the color picker is actually really good inside GIMP. Um, it gives you a lot. You've got so many different ways of actually choosing colors. You can randomly just use your slider here to go up and down to choose your colors. Um, this gets you some really random sort of colors. Um, there's different ways of viewing that color wheel. So you've got your site CMYK or your color triangles to go through picking the colors that you want. But for me, I never get colors which number one, print happily or um, just don't work well together. I don't have a very good color eye. So that's why I go for reference images and I go, okay, cool, what's a good reference image? And then I use the eyedropper to start just collecting the colors. Um, so once you've actually clicked on the color, you can just add it to the swatch and it adds it down here in these little squares. It'll give you a collection of the colors that you want. So select the orange, select the green, use the arrow and it sees it pushes it along. So I'm just going to select the, click the colors off of this image because that's all I need. I don't really want the design because the design doesn't work for what I need, but the colors are what I'm after. And this dark color down the bottom. There we go. So this particular, particular image is really only made up of four key colors. You know, there's a cut another tone there, which I might grab just off to the side, just so I've got it. But that was the four key colors, which I need from this image that it's got from there. You know, if I close that down now and get rid of it, um, I can go make my base image that I'm after. Um, so when I'm making a base image like that, I'll start off with the background. So I'd start off with the background color, which um, would be, oh, drag it outside of that group. So, so I'd start off with that and go, okay, my base color would be this dark color, which I've got. So grab that, okay. And I'll just paste that in. There we go. There's the base color to build off of. Flat color at the bottom, this one, taking out the corners and just putting a bit of wear around it. Got some white yellow nuts in there. The base color using the erase tool around the edges. A green, doing the same thing again, just making it smaller. Orange, making it smaller. And then the same color again that I've used on the bottom, making it smaller. And that's the way then that I'd build up my base colors to work with. It's just the, as you can see with this, it's just the base colors that we started off on. Just the dark, going to the dark, the, the yellow, going to the yellow, the green, going to the green, and it's just an overlay of all those colors. Um, for this poster then as well, I used the same color scheme for the letters. I had some iconography, which I had to use, which has its own colors, but all the letters, I've just used the same colors on top of the, on top of the original color to stand out. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And now for the bonus bit at the end. Since this was a retro poster that I'm trying to build up, um, I wanted to give it war a worn look. I've tried that with the erased edges, which do give it a bit, bit of a worn look, but the color is still very flat. So what I'm gonna do is I've gone out and found and taken a, a photo of the concrete patterns, which were just on a walkway a bit around the house. So I've got a nice big high res photo of the, uh, the cement on the driveway. 
So with that, I can now, um, I'm going to just uh, change the bright, the contrast of it a bit because the whites and the grays are all fairly similar. So I'm just gonna ramp up the contrast a little bit so that my blacks are blacker and the whites are a bit whiter. And then from this layer, which is over top of everything, I'm gonna change it from normal to multiply. Now that's kind of given me a really dark grungy look and it looks like it's been in a workshop for many, many years. So I'm just gonna wind down the opacity until I get a look which, there we go, until it looks like something like that, where it does look a little bit worn, but you can still see all of the details on that image.